Hey, Zach here again with another gear loadout video for what I usually bring for my late spring to early autumn backpacking trips. So just like my last video, the bag's already packed, so I'm just going to start from the outside and then unpack it and then just go everything from there. So first things first, uh, the backpack I'm using is the Waymark Mile 28. Um, what I like about it is how small it is, how lightweight it is, and the capacity. Uh, for my needs, this is a perfect bag. I've been looking for a smaller and lightweight bag for a little bit now and I settled on this after discovering the company. Um, the outer pockets for where you stick your water bottles on the side, very large and very spacious. Um, it has a front mesh pocket uh, that I usually stick my rain gear in and anything else that I need quick access to during the day. And what I like about it is that this portion here where the zipper is, is completely waterproof so I don't have to worry about any water getting in. And they even included a little flap in the corner so that water trickling down won't actually go inside here. It'll go over the zipper. All right, so from the outside here, um, got a smart water bottle, 750 milliliter, and one liter smart water bottle. Uh, the one liter is my dirty water, and the 750 milliliter is my clean water, filtered water. Um, I also keep a Sawyer Squeeze water filter on the outside. And if it's not stored inside on the outside, uh, over here, it's usually thread onto a bottle just so I could drink out of it. Um, next, on the front mesh pocket, I have the Silky Gone Boy saw uh, just to process some firewood at a campsite. Um, bathroom kit. Um, so there's one bidet here, a thing of hand sanitizer, 12 dehydrated towelettes, and a trial to dig a cat hole. Last thing in the pouch here is my Frog Togs rain gear. So on my rain gear colors, I'm using the beige jacket with some gray pants. Now, I have never tried the pants before, but a lot of people complain that they are no good, especially in the crotch area. Um, I tried them on, and I, as long as I remember to keep them pulled up, then I don't think I'm gonna have much of a problem. I ain't using them for rain, I'm using them for wind protection or just to keep warm at night. They do offer a nice barrier to keep the warm air inside. On the top here, I have a Thermarest Z seat. Uh, I'm not one to carry a backpacking chair generally on particularly lighter trips. Sitting on this foam pad is good enough for me. Uh, I know chairs are very comfortable and all, it's kind of like a hot topic, but for me, I'm just, no thanks. It's just too much extra weight that I don't really care about. And before I go into the top of the backpack, I probably should mention about these straps here. Um, on my right strap here, I have a Garmin InReach Mini 2 satellite communicator. What I like about it is that it has its own screen and for some of the functions, you don't actually require a smartphone to be used with it. So if your smartphone's dead, no problem. You can still use the features on the device. Um, on my left side here, I use one of the Waymark stretchy pockets here. Um, typically, I would carry my cell phone in here and a bug net and anything else I need quick access to like a snack or whatnot. Going on the top of the pack here, um, first item here would be my camp shoes. They're just some um, water socks I got from Amazon for about 20 bucks. They're lightweight enough and they're comfortable especially when you're in a sandy beach area. Um, nice to wear if you've been walking for hours of the day and your feet are kind of sore. You let your feet breathe a bit with these. So inside the backpack now, um, this is just a food bag filled with air, but uh, just to fill it up for the bag for video purposes there. can get about four or five nights of food in here packed inside this backpack. Uh, the next thing here is my cook kit. Um, I normally don't bring this stuff sack with me, but it was just handy for the video. I usually use just a piece of tape or a rubber band to keep it all together. But essentially, uh, it's a Tox 550 milliliter pot. Um, inside of it's a BRS 3000 stove, a mini Bic lighter, and a 110 gram fuel canister that I can usually get about four or five days about as well. Um, just like my other stove kit there, I use an MSR wind burner cup that I used to have from that stove system, but I no longer have it, and I just repurpose these to go on the bottom here, usually for coffee or to scoop water or whatever. Next is my shelter. It's the Lanshan One Pro in brown. Um, excellent tent. 
Uh, it's made out of silk nylon, so it does hold moisture a little bit more than a silk poly tent or a DCF tent. I like the color for, of it particularly because it kind of blends in with the forest more. It takes one trekking pole to set up and a minimum of uh, six stakes. 20,000 MA battery I found off Amazon a couple years ago, and I only exclusively use it on backpacking trips. It's got multiple outputs, uh, three type A outputs, a lightning output, a type C input output, and a micro USB input. Uh, what I really like about it though is that if you click the button, it actually shows you how much of the battery was remaining. Uh, most batteries just show you a dot uh, or a bar, but having a number gives you a better idea. Inside the stuff sack, I just used two USB cables. One is a USB A to micro USB, and then I have a Type-C to Type-C for my phone and anything else that's Type-C. This is a Polycro tent footprint that I made. Uh, I just got a window film kit, Canadian Tire, and then sized up the dimensions of my Landsham 1 Pro and then cut it to fit. Uh, I just like having a little bit of extra protection on the ground below my tent, keep it in a bag and fold it up, no complaints. We have a Sea to Summit large towel. Uh, generally, if I'm gonna go for a swim at the end of the day, or if I need to clean myself up, or if I need to wipe down condensation from my tent, I'll be using this. Uh, I use the Trekology I loved Pillow 2.0, just for ergonomic reasons. Um, I like the climate pillows, they're very comfortable, but I have better sleeps on this, and it's nicer on the neck. So what I like about it is it has a pad strap too, so it stays attached to your sleeping pad all night. my sleeping pad, I use the Thermarest Uberlite in the regular wide. Um, Thermarest doesn't make this pad anymore, unfortunately. Uh, too many people have had too many issues with them. I haven't had any issues apart from one deflating issue, but I attribute that to the ground being cold. Haven't had any issues with it since, and I do baby this, so I do make sure that uh, I'm not on any sharp objects. Site selection is key. Um, I am planning on getting a Gossamer Gear Thin Light Pad to go underneath it just for a little bit of an extra R value and extra protection. Um, yeah, very comfortable pad. I wish they still made it, but I can see why they stopped. Before I go into the sleeping bag, I'll go through all the items that are in my pouch up here. So, see the Summit Alpha Light Long Spork to eat my food, stir up a coffee. There's my mini med kit that I made. It Q-tips, band-aids, alcohol swabs, ibuprofen, tums, and repair kits for any items like my sleeping pad, extra washers for my soya filter, and other various small items that I may need. Next up is my headlamp, just a Petzl Tika, 350 lumens, and I also have the rechargeable battery with it. I do carry some bug spray with me just in case for whatever reason, but uh, generally I don't like to use bug spray just because I don't like the smell of it and how it makes you feel at the end of the day. If I'm wearing shorts like I am right now and bugs start appearing, then I will use some of this, but generally I wear convertible pants to avoid the bugs altogether. And last is a small pocket utility knife. Um, I don't need anything big I'm going in the woods. If I need to make a cut, this suffices. Uh, it's got a couple other tools on here that are handy, but generally, if I do need to cut something, the knife is good enough for me, and it's small enough just to get the job done. So, here's my sleeping bed. This is the Aegis Max Mini UL2 sleeping bag. It's 800 fill power down, and what I like about it is that it compresses to next to nothing. So this goes at the bottom of my backpack. Very warm, it goes down to about 6 degrees Celsius, but I think I could take it down a little bit more if I paired it with one of those Sea to Summit sleeping bag liners. I actually have one of those liners and it does help. I don't know about the 50 degrees per se, but I feel with this it would definitely take me down to at least minus 3, minus 5. Very comfortable sleeping bag and I got it for about $130, which is not bad. Last thing about my bag here is what I use to keep everything uh, dry. And now I'll be a nylon flume pack liner. I got this from Waymark Gear Co. when I ordered my backpack from them, and uh, I've just been using it ever since. It's an alternative to a trash compactor bag. Um, 
yeah, it's a little bit crinkly, but it does the job, and I don't have any holes in this. My trekking poles, just like my last video, I use the Woods carbon fiber trekking poles. Apart from the carbon tips coming out from excess use, I made a little repair to that. Um, I've had no other issues with these great trekking poles, um, and they're within my budget too, so it's a good alternative to if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper, but also want to save some weight. Uh, for my shoes, I just used some barrels. These are the Moab 3s, I believe. Um, I actually I just did a little gear repair today. I used some um, Gorilla Super Glue Gel just to repair the toes. It seems like they were splitting, so I didn't want that problem to worsen for the season hiking. So I just did a little bit of Googling and found out you can use that to do some quick repairs. For socks, I use the Darn Tough socks. Um, very comfortable, moisture wicking, and uh, no holes in them. They have a really good warranty if you do get a hole, but I mean, for the price of the sock, uh, I, I would probably just end up buying another pair. So normally when I go for hikes, depending on the time of the year, if it's black fly season, I'll generally wear a sun hoodie and I'll wear some convertible pants. These are some North Face convertible pants. And what I mean by that is that you can turn them in the shorts if you want to. If it's too hot out, you want to take your the bottoms off, you can. It beats packing a separate pair of shorts and just wearing pants. Even if it's nicer out, I'm usually just wearing some black shorts and again, a sun hoodie. Uh, I do have my frog talk pants if I need to block any wind or if I feel cold at night. So I don't feel like I need to bring any extra pants per se when I've already got those packed. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm just wearing a hat and I might be getting like a buff this year just to wipe the sweat off my face. But uh, generally, that's all the gear I take for all my trips between late spring and early fall. Uh, if you have any questions about the gear I use or if I have any plans on upgrading any gear, uh, just leave a comment and uh, yeah, I'll get back to you.